1890s, life was awfully bleaker on the one hour reserve. Food was scarce. People were dying from starvation and disease. A young Cree warrior named Almighty Voice slaughtered a cow. He was just trying to feed his people. But this one small crime would lead to the longest manhunt in Saskatchewan history. The history books say Almighty Voice was a cattle thief. But here on the reserve, they say the butchered cow belonged to him. He just didn't have the proper permit from the Indian agent to kill his own cow. Either way, it was still a crime. An almighty voice was locked up in the Duck Lake Jail. One of the guards joked that he would be hanged. The Indian took the threat seriously. He escaped and made his way back to the reserve, crossing the South Saskatchewan River to get there. I guess that's the only sanctuary he had. Norman Paul is a descendant of Almighty Voice. The Cree warrior is buried here, in the cemetery on the One Arrow Reserve. He was tall and handsome, they say. I guess he was uh, a ladies' man, you know, and they, he was quite a, a gentleman, a hand, but yet he was kind of on the, you know, always on the wild side of things. Most historians acknowledge this, as the only known photograph of Almighty Voice. Norman Paul disputes that, claiming this to be the great warrior. And there's more argument over what happened after his dramatic escape. After a few days, Northwest Mounted Police Sergeant Colin Colebrook caught up to Almighty Voice. Police accounts suggest Colebrook was just trying to do his job and quietly arrest the fugitive. Norman Paul has a different story. The Northwest Mount Police shoot, shoot at him first, you know, trying to nick him or something. But he was a crack shot, I guess. He just turned around and fired back and hit him. Colebrook was dead before he hit the ground. In that split second, Almighty Voice went from cattle thief to killer. For the next 19 months, Almighty Voice eluded police. Sightings were reported all over the West. But the truth was, he spent most of that time on his home reserve. In fact, he fathered a child with his wife during that time. He often hid in a secret crawl space beneath the floor of his house. Through it all, the people of One Arrow protected him. When the RCMP came by, they knew perfectly well why they were there looking for all my boys. And uh, every house they go to, they ask if they seen him. No, they tell him. You know, although he was there. Almost two years after he was first arrested, Almighty Voice, along with two friends, was finally cornered in a stand of poplars. Police surrounded them. A gun battle broke out. When the smoke cleared, three more men were dead. Two of them mounted policemen. The Indians were still alive. He got tired of running, and uh, he, they could have escaped uh, all kinds of ways from where they were. Huh? But then, uh, I guess he gave up, you know, from hiding. And that's where he, he told his two friends, he says, where we're going to be our last fight. The police would take no more chances. The next day, the bluff was bombarded with cannon fire. And with his people watching powerless from the hillside, Almighty Voice and his friends were killed. The people of One Arrow say Almighty Voice was only injured by the cannon fire and that he chose to take his own life. The Mounties always claimed that they had killed him. Either way, they had finally got their man. Some remember Almighty Voice as a hero, others as an outlaw. Whichever version you believe, the story of Almighty Voice and his days as a fugitive has become a Saskatchewan legend. For the CBC NewsHour, I'm Bill Wazer.